Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also check out Five Reasons YouTube for the latest streams. We do post up five hours as soon as the game ends, before floor, an hour before the game begins. If you hit subscribe, you will not miss anything during the week. Also, FiveReasonsSports.com. Make sure you spell that one out for the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and others. We do not have a paywall. Also, the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Mentioning Brady Hawk, his official sponsor here on Five Reasons, is Eric Rubenstein. This is the personal injury attorney that you want to check out. If you've got any kind of issue down here in South Florida, he handles medical malpractice, slip and falls, car accidents, all of that stuff. You can reach him at 954-829-ERIC, or I promise you this is the most entertaining attorney Instagram account you'll find. Ask about me, I got you. Ask about me, I got you. 954-829-ERIC. Eric graduated magna cum laude from St. Thomas. He's from this area. He's from a personal injury attorney family, and he will help you with whatever you need. So one more time, 954-829-ERIC for Eric Rubenstein. And now, tonight's episode. Down to Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to Five on the Floor. I'm your host, Greg Sylvander. You can follow me on Twitter at Greg Sylvander. Uh, tonight's floor plan with me is Alex Toledo. Uh, you could follow him at Tropical Blanket. I'm trying to say that a little bit less like a cracker and... Um, So I try to mix that in, not Toledo. Uh, Tonight's floor plan, we are going to dive into this. uh, I'm not going to call it like a great win. We're not going down that road. 105-98, the Miami Heat beat the Detroit Pistons as they should have. They did not cover the spread of 13 and a half, but they did get the victory, uh, further cementing their uh, one seed status. So we're going to talk about this game. We're going to talk about... um, the uh <laughs> i'm laughing at the comment that alex just uh hit me about ethan worrying about the word cracker on the podcast no i'll say it a few times cracker 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 um so on we go to the detroit pistons game uh we're going to talk about the different runs i think that there's a couple parts of this game that we should dissect you're better at me than that alex so we're gonna we're gonna go to you there and then we're gonna actually completely deviate from what we normally do like last time we had brady on and we recapped the game and we went player by player we're gonna completely scrap that and uh for our off the floor subscribers if you haven't subscribed yet you need to download the winnow app and um subscribe i have it as my pinned tweet right now to off the floor this is all exclusive content for our subscribers uh, that means you get stats, you get breakdown stuff from Brady, you get in-game analysis that is not posted on Twitter, as well as when we get closer to the draft and free agency, as I get saucy nuggets, they're going to winnow first. They're going to off the floor first. So I would highly suggest you um, check you it out. You get, a four, you get a 14-day free trial, and it's 305 a month. 305. You know why given, it's 305. Just, just um, to go on with this, Leif has already given – uh the window subscribers uh a draft nugget just yes three easy. three players to watch in the draft as we get close to the tournament that has not been revealed to twitter so uh sign on there maybe i'll share those again anyway uh enough of the 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 self-promotion alex let's talk about this game before we do before we get in so i, I actually didn't finish my sentence we're gonna go through we asked our window uh our off the floor subscribers what are they concerned about and we're gonna go comment by comment that we got back and we're going to uh, make sure that all you guys get heard and that we respond to each of each of you. So um, first let's talk about the game. I don't really know what to make of this game other than uh, there was runs 19 0 run. That was the longest run that a heat team has had on them all season. Detroit uh, had a 19 0 run there towards the end of the game. They didn't shoot well. Uh, they, narrowly out-rebounded um, Detroit. 
And Detroit was doing this thing where they played Jeremy Grant at the three with Bagley and Isaiah Stewart. And it gave Miami problems. And I want to pick uh, your brain. So let's start there. Um, first, any of your key takeaways from Detroit, Miami, because we're not going to spend a ton of time on the actual game because the, the commenters are going to get us into the conversation anyway. But what were your main takeaways and why was that particular matchup tough? Those three bigs and or, or were my eyes deceiving me? Um, I actually didn't notice that they were playing that matchup for that long. I wasn't paying attention to that. I think that's really observant from you. Like I would have to look back at that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like, and especially in a game where you're already missing Jimmy, uh, they were missing Ben with foul trouble for a lot of that, that uh, third I mean, for all, that entire third quarter run where the Pistons scored 19 without the Heat scoring a point. And then in the fourth quarter, uh, Bam was playing, but you know, that that's the type of lineup that has given the heat trouble, you know, that with the, the tagline now is shout out to Alf is Jimmy struggles against length, right? That's kind of what we say about the whole team, but really uh, this is one of those uh, classic trap games. Another shout out this time to Tony Fiorentino, because that's really the vibe that I got from this entire game. Like I, I feel they, you know, they play really good defense to close it out. And they were able to climb back from giving up that ridiculous run because I don't know how you do that to a team missing their number one pick. You're at home. Uh, like the Pistons team is probably the second worst team in the league. Maybe they're better than the Rockets. That's where I'll give them credit for. Uh, but they're playing Kelly Olynyk and Rodney Magruder. Like this team is basically the 2017 Heat. So uh, <laughs> it's the type of team that can sneak up on you. You know, they're not as good as that 2000. Uh, 17 heat team was but you had the third quarter where the heat only scored 11 points like that is ridiculous to only score 11 points in a quarter that's yeah. th this is a team that uh like the pistons are not known for their defense in any way so shout out to tyler for kind of bringing them out of it i'm pretty annoyed with kyle lowry uh, if, you know somebody who watches the heat we, we know that he's kind of taking it easy as he goes into the playoffs but he had three shots uh taken total through three quarters finished the game with three field goal attempts you know got to the line a few times which is good but sometimes you just need you need him to step up they were missing bam for a long time there with foul trouble they were without jimmy it's it's the pistons but in certain games where it's like these are the types of games you want to win if you're trying to hold on to that one seat because if you fall into that two seat i think it becomes likelier you play brooklyn you might you might have to get through that tougher um stretch right so i in the playoffs so i think if you really want to hold on to that one seed the, the the easier playoff path playoff path and home court advantage this is the type of game you close out i'm glad they able to, they were able to really um strengthen up their defense there in the fourth quarter and stop uh, you know messing around yeah and to that point about brooklyn getting to the seven seed let's just acknowledge kyrie irving went into the orlando magic arena and dropped 60 on their ass tonight and he did it efficiently note to james harden um so kyrie is a problem kd is a problem uh for sure and i think that they are gonna kind of shoot for that seven seed so i'm with you there tyler's a, just was awesome tonight i'm gonna go through a few of the things that i took away from this game and then we're gonna uh, pivot to the commenters because they got a lot more fun, colorful stuff to talk about than we do. Um, so here's my main oh, takeaway. I also forgot to shout out Max Drews, 16 points in the fourth quarter. Like, holy Ignitability. I said, on, I said on window, is he just fourth quarter Duncan Robinson? Yeah. I mean, and speaking of Duncan, I'll start there. Two for 10, two of nine from three. He did get six free throws. How the hell does Duncan Robinson shoot six free throws? But I'll just say this. Thank, thankfully for Duncan, they got this win because these are the type of games that where you really stick out like a sore thumb if you shoot two for 10 at home like that. Like eventually uh, this is going to be something that I don't know that Spolster is going to have to ha have the patience for as we get closer uh, to the playoffs. Want to acknowledge Bam Adebayo uh, getting to the line 10 times, ending up with 16, eight and three with four fouls, only played 24 minutes and was a plus 25. Like, Bam is getting to that point where he's getting comfortable enough where even when he starts off bad or he doesn't look great, like he had, I know he scored at one point and they said that's his first points of the second half. And it was late in the fourth quarter. I felt bad. Uh, 
that I liked, I liked what I saw from Bam. Obviously, the foul trouble you don't love. Jimmy didn't look good even before he sprained his ankle. I bet that they rest him Friday and and gear him up for Philly. Uh, Kyle is a frustrating situation. You're right on there, especially when Gabe is not shooting well. Uh, Oladipo was not impressive. Dwayne Dedman minus 23. That guy needs to sit for a week. I mean, like, let's just say Agreed. really, 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 really felt good about Markeith Morris minutes tonight. I liked his game. I thought that he, he played well. Um, and he spelled PJ Tucker in ways that was helpful for them in terms of just being an offensive release valve, hitting, hitting shots. Um, that's essentially it. And Tyler hero is a damn baller. I mean, like if you didn't feel good about a player going into the playoffs, uh, let Tyler continue to sway you that in that direction. Um, so th those are really my main key takeaways, Alex, you have anything else from this particular game before we hit the, up the off the floor comments? Um, no, I agree with you on the Deadman stuff. And as far as Keith, uh, I, I like that they were playing in with PJ. I think that's a kind of an interesting look if, Let's say, you know, because we talked about it in the past, there's going to be certain matchups in the playoffs where Deadman will almost definitely play, even if it's not much, because obviously Bam will be on the floor for like 40-ish minutes. Uh, whenever Bam isn't on the floor, Deadman will probably play against the Bucks, the Sixers, teams like that that have a whole lot of size, the Cavs. But um, other than that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Markeith Morris is only in the playoff rotation if he's in lineups like this with PJ, where it's like, you're not relying on Keith to be your main big as mm -hmm. a five, but you're playing him alongside PJ. So it's kind of a double dose, some, you know, two, two guys there who can, who can play those, those, those spots. So I, I I'm glad that Spo is trying out different looks. I I, I want to see this more, as you said, like I, you know, I would like them to rest Deadman and rest PJ. So I, I want to see more Keith. And I also want to see more deep ball. You mentioned him not being impressive. Uh, I could, it's really obvious he's just trying to fit in right now and he's not doing very much. And I think it's kind of like his load could have been a little better, you know, could have been a little higher today when you were missing Jimmy in, in, in the second half. And especially when Bam was out, like I was kind of hoping uh, they will give Deepo the ball a little bit, at least coming off a curl or something like that. Uh, and he never really got the chance to, to attack there. It, it's, they didn't need him to, you know, they were able to climb out of it mostly because of Tyler and Max and what they were doing. But um, Depot is one where I, I want to I want to watch them empower him a little bit more, not to the point of him running the offense, but just getting him a little, you know, some easy looks and some confidence going forward. Yeah, no, that's a great call, because in that first game, he got showcase reps. That's what I call them, showcase reps. And he hasn't been getting those recently. I know that he sat recently, but in this game tonight, he was all within the confines of the offense. Uh, so I think that, that is a good observation. It would have been nice to see him get uh, to some more shot creation and stuff like that. But truthfully, um, Victor Oladipo not having a great night was good for me when I was playing on prize picks. And I'm going to tell you what, about one of our great sponsors, and that is my favorite daily fantasy app, prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com or download the app from whatever app store that you purchase or not purchase, download apps from. Uh, Prize picks is super easy. You pick uh, basically your favorite players, uh, anywhere from two to five picks. You look at the statistics, whether points, rebounds, assists, um, or points, rebounds, and assists. Uh, they give you the over under. You choose over or under. You watch the games. You watch your guys win. For instance, tonight, Victor Oladipo was eight and a half points on prize picks. I took the under. He scored two points. Tyler Hero was 20.5 points. I took the over. He scored 29. Kyrie Irving uh, was at 20.5 points, uh, and he was a discounted player tonight. He got 60. So for a $6 power play, I won 30 bucks right there. So uh, it's a super cool app. I would highly suggest it. Use the code five. This is the key, y'all. All that stuff I just told you about means nothing if you don't start here. Use the code five, F-I-V-E. That'll get your initial deposit doubled up to $100. That's prize picks, uh, daily fantasy made easy. And it's super dope during NFL too. So anyway, back to um, the game. Less the game, actually. Let's go to the comments. So this is uh, all of our off the floor subscribers. Um, Shout out to all of you guys for providing us all of this content. Uh, Alex just literally at the buzzer uh, sent a message to everybody, um, a text message and said, send us your concerns. 
So we got your concerns. And now we're going to go through them one by one. I'm going to tee you up, Alex. We'll kind of talk through some of these. We're not going to spend too much time on some of them, but definitely uh, I'm going to read them all. One, concern, Deadman. We're going to talk more about him, so just hang tight. Uh, the next one, why isn't Jimmy getting more um, of his mid-range game going? Why isn't Oladipo being more aggressive? Why isn't Yurt getting any minutes? Uh, I'm going to answer the, the last two, and I'll let Alex take the first one. Yurt didn't get any minutes tonight because I felt like um, – Spolstra has these designed rotations that he's trying to stick to and combinations he's trying to watch. And I just felt like tonight was not a, a yurt night and he didn't want to go deeper into the bench as the lead was evaporating. I wouldn't look too much into that, but yurt is clearly not ahead of Deadman in the pecking order yet. Why is Oladipo not being more aggressive? Because he was trying to play within the confines of the offense. And I think that that's actually what you want him to do for the most part. I know that like, the the depot lovers of uh, on this show want to see him thrive but i think that he's doing the right thing by trying to fit in versus the team fitting into him this is alex where i want to pick your brain why is jimmy not getting his mid-range game going is it because the shots just ain't dropping yeah and I, I i noticed that he doesn't really go for those unless they like they really need him to and it's kind of like uh, we've said that about Bam, but I think Bam is more like he doesn't really look for that shot or, or, or he has at times, but he, he doesn't stay consistent in looking for that shot. Whereas Jimmy, for years and years as a Chicago Bulls or Timberwolf, whatever, as a sixer, he he went to the jumper, even though he wasn't some prolific shooter. He had, a, you know, he would take the open three every once in a while, wasn't a terrible three point shooter, was, was a pretty good mid range player. And that just hasn't been the case as a heat player. You could chalk it up to a bunch of things, but it's just continued to be the case this season. I feel like at different points throughout the seasons that, that he's been here, he's he'll have it going for like a couple months or a, a month or two at most, but it just doesn't stay throughout the whole season. Like I think, uh, I guess that first season in the bubble, he had it going. I remember in the last regular season, he had it going for a little while there too. And this season it was early on when, when, when the season first started, he was looking spry and was playing at the highest level he, he, he has this season. And so I think that that's a fair concern because it's like you you would like him to hit those shots in the playoffs, specifically against teams that we mentioned before, where they're going to force the Heat into a lot of tough possessions, tough shots like the Celtics, the Bucks, et cetera. I think you need Jimmy to hit some of those shots to because uh, even though we're not we, we may not like it, Jimmy is still going to get still going to get those one on one looks when things get tough. Now, that's a great point. We're going to live and die through Jimmy. Spoh's going to live and die through Jimmy. And um, either way, Bam, Bam and Tyler, another night where they were kind of the main points on offense, other than Struce's crazy, crazy night. They, they all got to the free throw line a bunch. And torch shout, out Lowry for, shout out Kyle Lowry for his four free throw attempts in the fourth quarter. I didn't notice, you know, and his assist I, better than nothing. I just wish he would shoot a little more. Uh, look, look at Alex walking back. Any Kyle concerns? Because, be yeah, no, 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 that's good. Um, so I'm going to blitz through three Deadman comments at once. We got to just, this is all the text message reads negative 23 minus 23. Uh, and then the next one is um, as it relates to Dwayne Deadman, bear with me here as I scroll up to it. Uh, Deadman hasn't played well in weeks. It feels like um, I'm with you. We're not going to spend a ton of time because we've talked about Dwayne Deadman. He needs time off when he got, when he missed that dunk, like down there uh, late in the game, I think he got an offensive rebound and he went up and tried to dunk it and he either got blocked, but I think it looked more like just a miss. Um, that tells me something ain't right with him physically. So I don't know what they're saying about that. I haven't heard anything that he's ailing at any, at any point. So then maybe it's just, he needs to get his legs underneath him. All right, let's jump into this next one. Lowry's lack of offense, especially when Jimmy goes out and Jimmy's stupid outside shooting continuing. We're not going to talk about Jimmy shooting because we just did that. Lowry's lack of offense. Um, we addressed it earlier. I think that this is where I'm at with Lowry. Um, he talked about the real season. 
all right, I'm going to hold you to that, Kyle. We're going to watch you in the playoffs. We're going to see how many field goal attempts you have. We're going to see how aggressive you play. And then we're going to have this conversation, where, and it's going to be a much realer conversation with much more implications. For now, because he kicked the can down the road in the press conference and said, I'm waiting for the real season to start, there's an element of all this where I feel like this team is just bored right now. Uh, moving on to the next one, stagnant half-court offense with the starting five. This is an interesting one. Because you wouldn't think that this starting five would have a stagnant offense. Um, it was kind of the tailor-made starting five, but I think lately it feels stagnant because Jimmy's not right. PJ hasn't been shooting well. So some of the things that really were making it click early were not are not clicking now. But I do not think that that's necessarily um, cause for concern going forward. So I wouldn't just lean into that too much. Um, I'm blitzing through here, and I'm going to lob this one over to Alex. Duncan's lack of sustained consistency and Bam's lack of aggression until the end. What you got there? Yeah, I just think it's kind of those problems that I that that are problems, but not big problems, right? Like I think we we've seen uh, what Duncan is at this point. He's a he's a high volume three point shooter, and when he's out there, he's going to take those threes. They're going to look for him. We've talked plenty about you know what those reads are. Uh, versus a dropping big versus when the, when the big is playing higher up or they're sending two guys and he has to make the pass. But when he is taking the shots, he has to make more. Tonight was just a, one of those frustrating nights. I'm not, I don't really think it's a concern. I just think uh, what we saw tonight is what's likely going to happen in the playoffs. If he, if he has a bad night, like Spo has a short enough leash with him now, where it's like, if Max has it going, he's going to, he's going to be the one playing. And I think uh, early on in the season, we might've said Gabe would have been the guy in the playoffs, but, you pointed out tonight, and I didn't realize this, that it's been two months of Gabe kind of shooting around 32% from three. So, yeah, the Duncan thing, I just feel that he's going to have a short leash in the playoff run. And if it happens, it happens. It'll be it, it'll be another hot topic all offseason, which I'm sure we'll both be looking forward to. Uh, but I wanted to say something regarding that starting lineup uh, half-court offense question that you got uh, a little bit earlier there. Uh, I looked up the stats while you were talking and shout out to pbpstats.com. Uh, they're great for looking up lineup data. I'm, I'm looking at the numbers of the starting lineup and their net rating together is 12.58. We really, really good. Uh, the offensive rating is 110, which is not actually, which is it's, it's about two points lower than the Heat's average offensive rating, but the defensive rating is 98, which is, <laughs> really, really good. So that's kind of affirming what we're talking about in a certain way, because their offense technically is worse within the starting, you know, with the starting lineup out there is two points worse than their average. So we know that their bench is really strong. A lot of times their bench is kind of doing patchwork when it comes to the offense in, in a lot of games where if Duncan isn't hitting early on, we know a lot of times Jimmy isn't really looking for a shot. Bam doesn't really look for a shot a lot of times in the first, like I feel, um, we've seen this a lot so it's valid but it's still one of their best lineups and the defense is so damn good that it's yet to be a big enough issue we've seen that the depth is a is the answer to any real concern here because if that lineup isn't working in the playoffs you could just mix and match with whatever piece you like uh, i do also have some stats that i forgot to mention just now the heat ranked 10th in the league in half court offense and they ranked also fourth in the league in transition offense fourth in the league in transition offense wow um and also 10th in half court offense like i think that that means we should probably see the force through the trees and pump the brakes on being too concerned about they were 19th last year in half court offense that's and that's informative 15th in transition and now fourth so that's kind of just a shout out to kyle lowry there and also of course heroes jump in in, in offense because i think they're the two biggest reasons why it's jumped so much. But I, I think Lowry is the biggest reason because he's just kind of made it easier for everybody. For as much as we we want to uh, complain about his lack of shot taking, and again, we're, I think we both have high expectations for him to take more than he's been taking recently in the playoffs. He still is impact, impacting the team on a high level, not only on defense, but on offense, even without taking shots or, or making any field goals tonight. Definitely. Uh, that's absolutely the Kyle effect. I think that that transition offensive nugget is really interesting when you compare it to last year. 
Um, so we, we've got maybe a handful of, of comments uh, from off the floor subscribers that we're going to get to. But before we do, I want to tell you about one more a great sponsor of the Five Reason Sports Network and Five on the Floor, and that's Water Cleanup of South Florida. Are you a South Florida property owner with an insurance claim? Are you dealing with water, mold, or fire damage? Looking for a reputable, fully licensed, insured, and certified contractor? Water Cleanup of Florida is here for you 24 hours a day. When a disaster strikes in your home or business and you need specialized, fast, reliable service, Water Cleanup of Florida understands the impact and stress that an unexpected disaster may cause. With over 60 years of combined experience, Michael, Robert, and their team is prepared to handle any size disaster. The guys are third-generation contractors in South Florida, so continuing to maintain their sturdy Sterling reputation is extremely important to them. Their objective is to make the cleanup and an insurance claim process painless and hassle-free. Water Cleanup of Florida is also a licensed building contractor, so they provide the A to Z service, one-stop shopping that busy homeowners and business owners require. There's no need to bring in any other contractors. They will handle it all for you. Call Michael anytime on his personal cell phone, 945-579-0356. Again, that's Michael at 954 954- Five seven nine zero three five six water cleanup of Florida dot com water cleanup of Florida. If you got the schmutz, they got the guts. All right, back to these comments. Um, we're gonna blitz through a few more. Uh, is it bad that I feel I have no confidence in anybody besides Hero and close games? Yes, that is bad that you feel that way. Luckily, Tyler Hero's on the Miami Heat, and don't worry, things are gonna get ironed out. Trust the spoces. Um, what is it that the Pistons are doing to cause the heat problems in all three games that they've played? And could whatever they're doing be problematic come playoff time? I'll answer the first part. Alex, you get the second. They take the Pistons lightly because the Pistons suck and they hang around. And that's just like the nature of a season where you are a one seed. You're going to sleepwalk through a, a certain number of games. Is there anything that you've seen in these Detroit games that you think could be problematic come playoff time? No. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> don't overthink it. No? Perfect. Really Moving no on. Because it's like I, I don't see one specific thing that's bothering them. It feels like a lot of what you're talking about, and it feels like a lot of sloppy stuff going on. Like that that whole process there in the third quarter where they didn't score and, and the Pistons got off 19. Like that doesn't feel sustainable. But, you know, the Pistons have their card. Good thing they're not going to have them in the AFC. That's true, right? Um, spacing concerns with the new bench lineups. Uh, I think I like that, yeah, uh, so I'm just going to say one thing about it, and then I want you to take the rest because you, the X's and O's part of it, you're going to slam dunk way better than I can. Um, so all I'll say is this, come playoff time, this whole like worried about the bench unit is not going to be as much of a thing because guys are going to be playing up to, in upwards of 40 minutes. Alex, though, speak to it from a basketball perspective. You said 100%. But also, I, I was kind of worried about this a little bit, just in case, you know, when, when Depot, when I heard that Depot was coming back and Keith was coming back right after, I, I had a feeling we were going to see him play together. And they're both kind of guys whose shots have been up and down their whole career. And they're not necessarily three-point shooters, right? Like, they can hit an open three, but um, that's not really their game. And we've seen that he'd have spacing uh, concerns with other lineups. So putting those guys in lineups with Deadman and possibly Jimmy, you know, lineups like that, uh, I, I think are they can get a little ugly, right? They can get a little ugly from time to time, but especially with the way that Deadman's been looking, for example, I think PJ hasn't been in the top of his game recently. Jimmy hasn't been at the top of his game. I think guys are just a little bit banged up, tired, not really playing at the top of their game right now. But it's a fair concern to have. And and one thing I will say about Vic and Keith, I want to see them really have their minutes stapled. Um, mostly to Kyle, because I think the way that Kyle plays and, and the type of offense, the brand of offense he plays is better for getting those types of guys uh, easy looks and easy layups, right? Whether or, or easy jump shots, whatever it be, like they play at a faster pace. And I think uh, it's better for those guys to get in rhythm, whereas Jimmy, he's going to slow things down. And I, I think it's harder for those guys to get the looks they want. So that that's just my opinion. Like I would do less of Vic with Tyler, not that they can't play together, and more Vic with Kyle specifically. And I think that in the playoffs, that's what we will see. Um, I'm skipping through a few of these. Uh, we got a shout out for the Morris PJ front court. That's somebody who knows the game. 
Uh, there's a few others on here that may need Will to said learn he likes it. it. By the way, I saw. The yeah, post. he said he liked it. Um, and uh, there's a few callouts for Bam's post game. Bam is doing fine in the post, folks. Like, let's just relax. He, um, had, a, he so, had a clutch basket in the post tonight. That yeah, that, uh, no, he's good. We're not spending time on Bam out of Bio's offensive game. He's 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 almost averaging. He's at 19 a game, guys. Like, I mean, come on. Um, I mean, Alonzo Mourning. Listen, I watched all them seasons. There were a lot of years he struggled to average 19 a game. Like he was a 20, 22 at the but most NBA, point per game no, score. It's a different yeah. era, I know, but yeah, like, a come lot on. More possessions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, so maybe that's not fair to 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 my dog Zoe. Um, just how long it took Spo to go to Max when Duncan didn't have it going, and ever since Jimmy left Jordan Brand after the finals and went with um with Dwayne's company, he's uh, sprained his ankles every month. Uh, we're not going to talk about the sprained <laughs> ankle. Just let that one go. Don't even bring it up. Um, le- let's. Uh, Butler. Yeah, I want to Fred- see the data on this. Whoever whoever asked at a window, if you could pull up the data, like from sprained ankles before and after. Yeah. Uh, no. Then, then the we'll have you on the podcast to break it down. Yeah. Butler's like, bring the data. Then we'll talk about this. How's that for data? Butler's fragility. Also, the problems today was it's as simple as Bam being in foul trouble, I think, to some degree, or lack of defensive and offensive focus. I think to some degree, shots weren't going, so no rhythm, I think, to some degree. Um, so that's uh, essentially what that was. This is an interesting one, um, and we're running out of time here. Ethan's going to kill us for going this long on a post-game pod, but you know what? We're, we're, we're talking with our topics. subscribers off, off the floor. Um, problematic as in teams copycatting. So you're, so I mentioned that three big lineup that, that we saw, uh, is this becoming a thing where teams like think that like, this is how you crack the Miami heat. You play them with, with length cause they struggle against length or, um, I just, this is where I'm at with this and Alex chime in if you want to, or we'll just keep going. I just don't know enough teams have the personnel to actually do this. And I also think when the playoffs come that there's going to be ways of minimizing teams ability to be effective with it. Um, I, I, I just, I'm not concerned yet with the overall length swallowing up the heat. There could be some matchup specific stuff with one player that I could be concerned about, but not about the team as a whole. Yeah, I'm pretty much with you there. Uh, there's definitely some teams who could try that stuff. Like thing with like, the Cavs, for example, who I think at this point might be their likeliest first round opponent because I think they're, they're sliding in Toronto is getting playing well. The Cavs are missing some of their best players. So it would, it would, it sounds pretty likely that they could see them. You know, they play three bigs at a time. They start with three bigs. So uh, they could very likely see it in the first round. So it, it, it would be tough, but I'm not necessarily worried about it too much. I think th- those types of guys that they have are, are, are guys that the Heat can take advantage of. Like I'm not worried about Larry Market and you know, Mobley and Jared Allen are really good at what they do. Who knows if they would even have Jared Allen for that matchup. But um, we saw Bam go at Mobley with no issue. And they could give the Heat problems for sure. But I I, I would expect the Heat to, to win a series like that in five. I don't know who what other team in the East would run a lineup like that. I guess if you consider the Celtics uh, lineups three bigs, because they, a lot of times yeah. they'll run just really big lineups with, like, uh, Rob Williams, uh, uh, Grant and Williams, Jalen, t- Jason. Yeah. yeah. Like they run very big lineups that, that aren't necessarily three giants like the Cavs, but, um, that it, it's, it's the, the size thing is a real concern. So I think, um, I, I think that's the biggest concern going into the playoffs is scoring against not just size, but size that knows what it's doing and, and size that switches really well with like, like the Celtics do. Yeah, no, that's the key, the switching. If teams aren't don't have the IQ to actually execute that stuff and stay in their spots and not get caught slipping, um, th- they're going to make them pay. So it's about those disciplined teams that can actually switch with the d- level of IQ uh, you need defensively to make that all work. Um, blitzing through these, I wonder if the overall team defense, even with all the dogs, is enough to stop the best offensive teams in the playoffs. Yes, Let's not worry about the defense. Like that's the one thing here that I think is going to figure itself out. Um, nights like well, these really they're fifth overall in the league. Like the, exactly. The exactly. The, the, I noticed tonight their offensive rating is finally outside of the top 10 where it's been all season. They're 12th now off in, uh, in the league in offensive rating and fifth in defensive rating, which is kind of, I think where we thought they were going to be before the season started. 
And last one, nights like these really show how explosive Struess can be. How do you not play him in the playoffs? If he was given the same sets, minutes as Duncan, he would be just as good, I think. Uh, all I'll say is this. If Duncan does not have a good playoff run, Struess may replace Duncan Robinson in this rotation going forward. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But until that happens, we are not going to go any further to address that. I uh, want to sincerely thank all of our subscribers from off the floor for sending us all of those questions. We're going to do more of this. It'll probably be a little more organized because uh, we just literally on the fly thought about doing this. So um, Way more concise. I so bet. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you and definitely be more concise. Uh, and Ethan will probably be quarterbacking it. So it'll be more professional also. We won't be saying cracker. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, the heat again, escape the Detroit Pistons, get a victory. They are uh, further cementing the one seed and I'm feeling good about that. So uh, what are we going to end the podcast with? Let's go heat. And we will be back the rest of this week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.